Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create an object in the Figma, which is going to follow the cursor. I'm gonna use the animal plugin and a spline in order to create this effect. So if you're interested to know how, just get sure to watch this video until the end. My name is Kia and here's the Kimo. Welcome to my channel. As I told you in the intro of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create an object which is going to follow the cursor movement. We can use this effect in order to provide more proper system feedback for users to support them to have a better understanding what will happen if the user click on any object in the user interface. In today's case study, I'm going to have a video element in my user interface and I wanna give this message to the user that if they click on that video box, the video will be played. To do so, I'm going to create the text arc inside the Adobe Illustrator and then I will import the text that I made into the spline tool. In the spline tool I'm going to create the effect that uh, basically the text is going to follow the uh, uh, the user cursor. After I finish this effect in the spline I'm gonna embed this effect uh, into the Figma using the Anima plugin. Now before we do any further if you are new here don't forget to subscribe to my channel and watch the other videos as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by creating our text in the Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna create a circle shape and remove the fillings and add a border to it. I increase the border width a bit in order to um, yeah, make it more visible. Then I'm going to copy paste it and duplicate it in my thing. Later on, I will use the second one for another purpose. Uh, now I'm going to use the text on the path tool in order to yeah, write a text uh, and the circle shape that we made before. I write watch this video and uh, I copy paste it again in the same uh, path uh, in order to create more symmetric shape. Now I right click on the text and create outlines from it. Don't forget to do this step because it's really important when we want to import it in a spline. In the next step, I'm going to use the second uh, circle that we made before in order to create, um, yeah, let's say a dash um, shape between two texts to make and have a, a complete circular uh, shape at the end. Now, as you can see, I'm going to uh, use the uh, crop tools in order to uh, resize the design that I have uh, in a size that I like to use later on. As you can see, I export the design that we have in this VG format. Now I'm gonna open a new file in the spline tool uh, and then remove the uh, default square in the center and drag and drop uh, the SVG file that we made in the Adobe Illustrator into it. I'm gonna resize it and position it in the center. Now I'm gonna add a circle in the scene which is going to be the background of the text um, and basically the main object that is going to follow the cursor. Now I'm going to bring the text in the foreground of the uh, design in order to uh, make it visible. Then I select the text SVG that we had and make a group out of it in order to bring the anchor point in the center. Then I quickly change the color of the background to the white. Now I'm going to work on the rotating animation or infinite rotating animation of the text. I'm going to select the text layer and, and create a new state for it. In the new state, I'm going to rotate the text in the z-axis for a huge uh, degree in order to create the infinite uh, loop rotating uh, animation or effect. Then I create the events, new event, and put the type in the start and uh, change the cycle to yes, uh, and put the transition type to linear and increase the time of the animation to 60 seconds or even more to create a smoother animation. As you can see, the text animation is working pretty well. Now it's time to uh, create the effect that this object or hold the object in the same follow the uh, cursor. I'm selecting all the objects which I grouped before and I create a new event for them. And the type of event I change it to follow. And as you can see, when I play this um, uh, preview of the animation that we made, the uh, whole object is following the cursor. Now that we have the effect uh, that we wanted uh, in the spline tool, it's time to embed uh, this, uh, let's say, design into our prototype using Figma. I'm going to create some user interface element in order to create more realistic, um, um, let's say, user interface. So I add some headline and text, and then I create uh, a frame, uh, and I use the uh, Unsplash plugin in order to add a photo into it. 
I just select a frame and I click on one of the photos that I found in Unsplash plugin, it will automatically replace with the background of the frame that we made. Then I'm going to add a gradient um, on top of the uh, image uh, background of the frame in order to make it a bit darker. Then I'm going to use the um, feeder uh, icon plugin, plugin in order to add the play button icon into the um, yeah the frame that we made. So I just uh, yeah resize the icon and uh, increase the border uh, width a bit uh, in order to make it stronger and change the color to white in this step. Now I'm gonna duplicate the uh, rectangle that we made um, for the background and position it in front of all the other layers. I'm going to remove the background uh, and uh, yeah, the color and everything. So this is the frame or the rectangle that I'm going to import the effect into it. I'm, I'm going to open the spline tool and disable all the options that we have in the export panel and update the design at the end. Now I'm gonna copy the embed code that we have there in the export panel in the spline and open my Figma again. I'm going to select the frame that we prepared before for this purpose and then open the Anima plugin. In Anima plugin, I'm going to click on embed a code and then I will paste the code that we brought from the uh, spline into it. I'm going to define the size of iframe in this step. Uh, it's really important, do not forget this step because um, if we choose another size for this iframe, later on when we uh, uh, want to run the prototype or run the preview, we will see that the iframe size is not going to follow the frame that we prepared for it. So get sure to follow this step. And then save uh, this embedding code and run the preview. And as you can see, it's working but the background color is still there. So I'm clicking the frame again and uh, increase the transparency or reduce the transparency amount to 10%. And now, as you can see, uh, all the element under this frame is going to be visible. And also the effect that we wanted or we made in the spline tool is going to work. Here's another example. And as you can see, we kind of managed to simulate this effect uh, in the Figma, in our prototype. I hope you learned something new from this video. I'm gonna share more videos about my daily learnings and experiences using different tools and also techniques in the user interface and user experience design of working fields. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to not miss any other upcoming videos. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.